When people first turn on a game, their first thought usually isn't about the menus. However, menus are actually incredibly important. Not only are they the first thing your player is going to see, but they also add a sense of polish and flexibility to your game. Through menus, we can also learn a lot about game development. They can teach us how to structure our game, which is going to be important for big and small projects. In this video, we're going to be making a simple menu system. I should be able to use the arrow keys to move around, and from here I should be able to select a different menu state. So for example, if I go to the options state, then I'm able to go to the options menu, and from here I can adjust things such as volume or controls. If I go back, I should be able to go back to the main menu, and if I go to credits, it should take me to a credits menu. Of course, if I press start game, then we should enter the main game loop. For the purpose of keeping things simple, our game is just going to be a title screen that says thanks for playing. We're not going to worry too much about the functionality of, say, changing volume settings, but rather we're going to be focused on how exactly we can build this menu and how we can transition from menu to menu, because although it seems trivial, it's actually a little trickier than it looks. You should be able to use what you learn in this video on any existing or new project. So if you have a game lying around, it shouldn't be too hard to just replace my simple game with your game. And if you don't have a game lying around, it'll be a good place to start. We're going to start by building a game loop so you can see how it works. But for those of you already familiar with the concept, I'll leave a timestamp so you can skip ahead. Coding wise, we're going to use some slightly more advanced techniques. You're going to need to be familiar with functions and some basic object oriented programming methods such as inheritance. If you feel a little bit rusty, don't worry, I'll try my best to explain things as I go along. You're going to need to have the Pygame module installed to follow along with this tutorial. Mostly you should be able to just pip install it, but I'll leave a link in the description in case you need help. Setup wise, we're going to have three files. The main file, which is where our program will be run, a game file, which is going to hold our game class, and then a menu file, which is going to hold our menu classes. Alongside my Python files, I also have this .tdf file. This is a font file, and it's what's going to allow us to give our menu system that retro aesthetic. If you're not super interested in that, then I'll show you how to use Pygame's default font. But if you are, I'll leave a link in the description and you can download this file yourself. Before we do any coding, it's important to know how a game loop works. For our loop starts when we get input from the player. For example, they press on the keyboard or they click on the mouse. Basically anything they need to play your game. High game is going to denote these as events. From here, we're going to take what the player has done and update the game based off of their actions. So for example, if they press the left arrow key, then the character should move slightly to the left. So we'll perform any adjustments or calculations here. Finally, we're going to take those adjustments and draw the game onto the screen. This loop is going to go on forever and ever until we tell it to stop. Every iteration of this whole cycle we're going to call a frame. If you've ever made a flipbook animation as a kid, the idea of a game isn't too far off. When you made that flipbook animation, you drew all the pictures at once, and then you flipped your notebook really fast and it gave it the illusion of movement. Here, Rather than drawing all of our pages at once, we're going to draw one page, and then we're going to see what the player does and draw the next page according to that. From here, we'll have our illusion of movement. Now that you understand how the game loop works, let's go ahead and code it. So we're going to go ahead and get started in our game.py file. Here we're going to create a new class, and we're going to call it the game class. So basically what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to encapsulate everything that we're going to be doing in this tutorial. That's what the game class is for. You'll see why it's important later and it's going to make our lives a lot easier down the line. The first thing we're going to want to do as soon as we create our game object is initialize pygame. So to do that, we're going to go all the way to the top. We're going to call import pygame. And then in our initiate function for our game, we're going to do pygame.init. And this will give us access to all the cool features that pygame allows. Next thing we're going to do is create two Boolean variables. First, we're going to have a self.running variable. Next, we're going to have a self.playing variable. So we're going to equal the self.running variable to true, but we're going to equal the self.playing variable to false. We'll have two loops that use these variables. The self.running variable will be true when the game is on. So for example, if you turn on a console, you might not necessarily be playing it, but it's still on. Our self.playing is more specific. This will be when the player is actually playing the game. In this case, our thank you for playing screen. Next, we're going to create more true or false variables, this time for the controls. We'll have an up key, a down key, a start key, and a back key. And that should be enough to iterate through our menu. 
all these are going to start off as false. The idea is the player presses the up key, this should be set to true. Using these, we'll be able to keep track of our player's actions and act accordingly. Now let's create two new variables. We're going to create a display width variable and a display height variable denoted as such. So if our game is an endless series of pictures, this is our canvas size. It tells us what size pictures can fit. Our canvas is going to be a rectangle that's 480 pixels wide and 270 pixels tall. So basically, a pixel is a small little square of color, and we can fit 480 times 270 pixels in our little rectangle. So now that we have our canvas dimensions, let's make our actual canvas. So we're going to call it display, and then we'll call it using pygame.surface. This creates our canvas, and we'll answer our dimensions as a tuple. So we'll say self.displayWidth, self.displayHight as our two arguments. And this creates our canvas that's 480 by 270. Now that we have a canvas, we want the player to see what we're drawing. So we're going to create a window. We're going to do that using pygame.display.setMode. And then from here, we can just enter the dimensions of our canvas. A couple last things with this init file. So we're going to want a simple variable we'll call font name. This will be a string that just tells Python where exactly to find the font file. Because our font file is in the same place as our game files, we can just call the font file itself. If you want to use the retro one like me, you can just type in 8bitwonder.ttf and you're good to go. If you're too lazy to download it, Pygame comes with the default font, and you can call it using pygame.font.getDefaultFont. Now I'm going to comment this out for now, but it's there in case you need it. Last thing we're going to put in for now is some color. So we'll put in black and we'll put in white. If you're not familiar with RGB, basically it's a set of three numbers that indexes the red value, the blue value, and the green value. So for black, we're going to put in zero for all three. For white, we're going to put in 255 for all three. When we create our game object, all of this will be created as well. So if we go to our main file and we import our game class, so from game, import game, and create a new game, we'll call it G, and everything in the init file will run as soon as this runs. So now that we have our game object, let's go ahead and make our game loop. So the first thing we're going to want to do is check the player inputs and see what buttons they're pressing. Let's go ahead and create a new function and we'll call it check events. Now Pygame is great in that it does a lot of the dirtier work for us. We're able to get the player's inputs using for events in pygame.event.get. And basically what this does is it goes through a list of everything the player can do on the computer. The first thing we're going to check is if the player has clicked the X at the top of the window. So if event.type is equal to pygame.capitalquit, this means the player has clicked the X and they want to close the window. To end the game, we're going to want to end the game loop. So to break the game loop cycle, we can set our self.running and self.playing variables to false. If the player hasn't closed the window, then let's see if they press anything on the keyboard. And we can do that using if event.type is equal to pygame.capitalKeyDown. Let's start with the enter key. So if the player has pressed something on the keyboard, we can check if it's the enter key. So if event.key is equal to pygame.k and then return. If this is true, then that means the player has pressed the enter key. So we'll set our start key pressed variable to true. We're going to want to do the same thing for the backspace key, the down key, and then of course the up key. Using this function, we should be able to get everything we need to know from the player's input on the keyboard. One last thing, we need a way to reset these variables. So if the player is not holding up anymore, the up key variable should not be true. There's a couple different ways to do this, but for now we're gonna keep it simple. And after every frame or every iteration of the game loop, we're just gonna set all these back to false. So that it'll only be true if on the next cycle, the player is still holding the key. Since this is something we're probably gonna have to call fairly often, let's make a function for it. So we'll call a function reset keys. And then from here, we can just set all our flags equal to false. Now let's make a function where we can actually perform all the steps of the game loop. 
we're going to want to call this our game loop function. And in the game loop function, we're going to have a loop. So we're going to say while self.playing. So while the player is playing the game, we're going to want to check to see what they input. And we can do that using the function we just made. So self.check events. We'll say that the player ends the game by pressing the start key. So if self.start key, then we'll set our playing variable equal to false. This will break this loop here, but it won't necessarily turn the game off. Now that we know what the player wants us to do, we can adjust our canvas accordingly. But before we do that, we're going to want to fill our canvas with one single color. So we're going to do that using self.display, where display is our canvas, dot fill. Then we can put in self.black. What this essentially will do is it'll reset our canvas. That might seem a little odd, but let me illustrate why it's important. Let's say I have this player character right here and I want it to move right. How do we do that? Well, according to our game loop, I would press right on the keyboard, and then what should happen is some calculations are done, and when the player appears on my screen again, it should be slightly to the right. But what actually is going to happen is you're going to get something like this. The reason you're seeing double is because we never got rid of the character image from the first frame. So all that we did was we updated our screen, but never cleared it. It's the equivalent of when you have your flipbook, you don't go to the next page, but you just keep drawing on the same page over and over again. So going back to our code, we want to make sure that we flip to the next page, and we can do that by resetting our screen by filling it black. Now that we've reset our screen, we want to go ahead and put our canvas onto the screen. You can think of your computer screen as an X and Y grid. So at the top left right here, we have 0, 0. This would be the top left of your monitor. If we want to go right, then we add to the X coordinate. So maybe over here would be 50, 0. If we want to go down, then we add to the Y coordinate. So maybe we add 10, and this is 50, 10. That's how we're going to do the math for where to put our images. To do that, we're going to want to use something called a blit. So we're going to do self.window, where window is our screen, and we're going to do dot blit, and we're going to blit our canvas or our display, self.display. And we're going to do this at position 0, 0, where these are x and y coordinates. Our window and our display are the same size, so when we align it at position 0, 0, what we're really doing is we're aligning our display with our window. This will ensure that whatever we draw on our display will come out the way we expect it to when it's drawn on our screen. Now we can ask Pygame to put whatever we have onto our computer screen. So if we do pygame.display.update, it'll physically show the image of our window on our monitor. Now don't get this confused with self.display. This is our canvas. Well, this physically moves the image onto the computer screen. The last thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to reset our keys. So we, if we do self.resetKeys, a function we made before, this just set all of our flags back to false for the new frame. Before we continue, we can go ahead and run our little program and see what happens. So we'll have two loops now. We'll have an outer loop that says while the game is running. And then we'll have one on the inside. So we can just call our game loop function. So while the game is running, we can run game loop. This will enter this loop. So while self.playing is true, our game loop will run. Just for demonstration purposes, I previously set playing a false, let's set it to true, and let's see what happens. What we expect to happen is a window to open. If I zoom out and run my program, I get this. This is our new window. Awesome. So if I press this X, I expect it to close, and that's exactly what happens. Now that we have a window that opens and closes, let's go ahead and work on our game, so we can test this game loop. So. We need to draw things that are playing on the screen, since so that's all our game is going to be. So we're going to go on and go ahead and make a function that will let us draw text on the screen. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we'll call it draw text, and it's going to have four arguments other than the self. By the way, the self is a reference to the game, so we get access to all these variables. So we're going to have the text, and this is going to be what we actually want it to say. Then we're going to have the size. This is going to be the size of the text. And then we're going to have an X and a Y. And these will just tell where we want it printed relative to the screen. The other parameters we're going to want are going to be the text, or what we want it to say, the size for the text, and then an X and a Y position so we can draw it relative to the screen. 
So now let's load up our font. To do that, we're going to do font equals by game dot font with the lowercase dot font uppercase. And then this, we're going to put in two arguments our font name and then the size. Our font should be loaded. Now let's actually draw our text. So we're going to create a local variable called text surface. And then we're going to use font.render. So we throw in our text. This is what we actually want it to say. This true is for anti aliasing. Uh, it's not super important, so if you don't know what that is, just roll with it for now. And then, of course, we put in a color. We want our text to be white, so that's what we're going to put in. What this did is it created a rectangular image of our text. And then from here, we can get the dimensions of that rectangle. So we're going to do text rect is equal to text surface. And then we're going to use the function dot get rect. This will be a small little introduction to Pygame's rectangle class, which is going to be really important when we're building our games. We like rectangles because we're able to do calculations on them really quickly. But for now, this is what you need to know. The rectangle class is going to have four main components. It's going to have an X, a Y, and then a width and a height. This will detail the size and where the position of the rectangle should be. The text rect is a rectangle, and in this rectangle, we have our text. Now what we want to do is we want to position this text at a certain point on our screen. So to do that, we're going to use some Pygame features. If we do text rect dot center, what this does is it assigns an X and Y position to the center of the rectangle. So if we throw in our X and Y parameters, this will center the text wherever we want it to be. And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to put the text onto our canvas. So we're going to do self dot display dot blit. And then from here, we're going to want to put the text surface, which is the actual image. And then what we can do, rather than passing in an X and Y like we did before, we can just pass in the text rect. And from here, Pygame will be able to take all the necessary information, such as the width, height, X and Y coordinates, and be able to put it on our screen for us. Now let's climb back up to our game loop so we can use the function we just made. So right here, after we reset the screen, we can say self.drawText. We're going to put in thanks for playing as our main text. So that's what's going to be displayed on the screen. And then next we want to put in a size. We're going to put in size 20. And the final key is that we're going to put it in X and Y coordinate. In this case, we want to put it in the center of the screen. And because we have our display width and our display height, we can just divide that by two. So if we do self.display width divided by two and self.display height divided by two, this should put it in the center. Now we should be able to run our game and see the words thanks for playing printed on the screen as expected. So here it is. We'll end things here for part one. In part two, we'll learn about state machines and how we can use them to help build our menu system, and then we'll finally put it together. Hope you stick around and take care.